Hello. I never, never grow tired of that intro. Uh, oh, have... it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Introduce the show, Jax. Oh, hello, everybody, and welcome to Lengro Late Night Live on Wednesday at nine o'clock. And we weren't here last week, but we're so glad to be back this week, aren't we? We are indeed. We didn't get to do our party uh, with Amanda in uh, in West Sussex, did we? But we are going to do it again. Uh, is she joining us live tonight or not? Do we know? Well, she's wandering around somewhere, but she has told us that she will be joining us at some stage. So we just have to look out for her. Oh, fantastic. Uh, so what have we got coming up on tonight's show, Jack? Oh, well, we've got a bit of fashion. We've got what to watch on TV this week. And we've got the amazing Deborah Petrolengro, who <sighs> is your cousin. But she's also a very famous clairvoyant, didn't you know? She's um, she done the celebrities and she's a good friend of Tyson Fury's as well. So we're going to be finding out a bit about him as well tonight. She is indeed. And can I just say, oh, can I say hello, Lydia? Hello, Claire. Hello, Joanne. Uh, loads of regular faces there. Um, I have decided that when we bring Deborah on tonight, okay, I'm lying. Uh, you decided, <laughs> Lady Lo decided that I would let you uh, interview Debs, um, but I'm going to stick around on the screen as well because it's a bit difficult for me to interview uh, my own cousin because I know I'll just end up talking to her about Chanel bags and stuff, to be honest. <laughs> but shall we bring uh, the lady herself on? Yes, let's. Let's bring on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my cousin, uh, Deborah Petulengro. Hi. Hello. <laughs> How are you? We've got Heavenly with us. Hi, Heavenly. Heavenly. But let's just check uh, that you we can hear you, okay? Uh, Deb, tell everybody what part of the country you are in. It's really, really crackling at the minute, so I can't hear you. So can you just say that again for me, please? Yeah. Listen, if you want, come off okay. and come on again um, and reconnect because it's really crackling and you keep using. And we've got lots of questions uh, that I know that viewers and Jack want to ask you. So take yourself off, come back on, and uh, why don't we talk about what national day it is? And I think I've got something uh, to bring up about that as well, if I can be a good tech person. <laughs> Well, it is actually National Pandemonium Day today. And so today's the day we celebrate bedlam, chaos, and the craziness of life. And did you know that the word pandemonium comes from the Greek word pan, meaning all, and demonium, meaning inferior gods. And the word was first appeared in the 17th century poem by John Milton called Paradise Lost. Now, I remember going to Paradise Lost. I think that was in Watford the nightclub but anyway it's a whole other story so if today you're feeling like your life is a bit too boring predictable or you're stuck in a rut today is the day to go wild and mad oh, so um, have you had a wild mad day today Claire uh, I had a wild mad day at the gym uh so a bit like Tyson Fury maybe I was trying to follow in his footsteps I was thinking a bit of jabbing but a sparring yeah. but only against the bag and somebody's pads but uh <laughs> yeah I really I, I think they were all out at the gym does that count yeah definitely well, I've got Deb's backstage again. Should we see if her tech works? Yeah. Let's ask her if she had a day full of pandemonium. Deb's, can you hear us okay? I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> it's still very crackly, but I'm back. <laughs> Over to you, Jax. Okay, so Deb, um, we haven't actually met in person, but we've been talking to each other lots all day today, haven't we? We have. We have. We have. It's been good fun. Today. What I wanted to ask really you good. today was about um, the Romani way of life and how it's different today than from, you know, the days of your, your grand, your grandparents and things like that. Because you know, your grandparents would have lived in a bardo, um, which is a caravan, and you actually live in um, a mobile home, don't you? So, um, so tell us a bit about that. I think the way this has changed over the years years and years ago there was more traveling than what there is now a lot of romany families now are settled and got businesses um but i'm living and um, my parents bought a business it's a caravan park but they've got it really for all the family so there's my mobile home then my brothers and then we've got where my mom and dad is so we're all still in one community but not moving up and down but years ago, yeah. I did used to travel. So the way of life is, I suppose, it isn't dying out as such. 
but a lot more is settled than what it was. So, who knows? Yeah. And you're, you're in Blackpool, aren't you, Deborah? I am. And so, were your 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 parents and your grandparents all from Blackpool? Yes, they are. So, around about two miles away from me is Leah Petrolengro, which is Claire's uh, mother's full cousin. It's Daisy. Um, and then there's Sarah Petrolengro. So, she's got her clairvoyant booths on the Pleasure Beach and on North Pier and on Central Pier. So, most of the Petrolengro family are here in Blackpool. Yeah. Now you've got um you were telling me a story earlier about your great granny Sarah and the snails. So would you like to share that story with our lovely viewers? <laughs> yeah, so from a little girl, obviously we talk about old ways of how the old Romany people used to live. So the story come up of um my granddad's mother Sarah, they had the Romany Vado, which was the gypsy wagon. And she liked to eat snails. So her husband was out to work one day and she went and found all these snails and put them in a bucket. But when, when her husband came home from work, she wanted them for herself. She didn't want to share. So she put the bucket in the vado but forgot to cover it up. And they woke up in the middle of the night with snails all over the vado. <laughs> Now, now in, yeah. <laughs> now, years ago, um, the Romani women used to go out telling fortunes, didn't they, while their husbands were out at work. And that's how they got a lot of their the beautiful clothes and things that they wore, because they worked for rich the rich women, didn't they, who, who gave them these lovely clothes and things. Yes. Yes, that's right. So the Romani women, as the men used to go out to work, obviously, as a man of the arm should do, but all also, the Romani women used to go out telling fortunes and um, they used to do a lot of, like, um, ladies in manners. And they used to tell fortunes and do the tea leaves and the ladies would come out and bring them clothes. So they had lovely gowns and, I suppose, like, ball gown kinds of things. They had the best of clothes by telling the fortunes. Yeah. Yeah, and the clothes were passed down, weren't they? Over the children, the children got clothes as well. So yeah, because we've I think we've got a picture of your beautiful yes, little yes, um, yes, baby girl. Down clothes was a big thing. So that that was actually your dress, wasn't it? Yes, it was. So I'm thirty five. So there should be a photo of me in that dress. Um. As Romani women, we like our little girls dressed as little girls. Um, and we have all the dresses handmade, um, all hand smocked. And from when I was a little girl, and heavenly had my dresses, we pass them down because they're all well sewn and they just get passed down through generations. So my girls is wearing my dresses. Oh, yeah. Save his money as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, um, tell us about the food, because I know um, that the food that, that the Roman gypsies used to always cook was really real hearty comfort food, wasn't it? And Claire, you cooked, um, you like cooking your, your, what's it called? Your gypsy joey stew or something. What's it? Jerry Gray. We love the That's it. That's it. <laughs> but you, you love cooking as well, don't you, Deborah? And you, you cook all these amazing things as well. Yes, I do. I'm actually a very good cook. That's why I I'm fat, <laughs> but <laughs> cooking and Romani food is unbelievable. So, um, up in Lancashire where we are, I was always brought up to make a steak and kidney suet pudding in a rag and in a gypsy pot. But then when I got married to Ben, he was like, what's a steak and kidney pudding? We have bacon pudding. So it's the same thing. But it's like a bacon and onion, roly poly, and suet, and then you steam that as well. So they are fantastic Romany recipes, but me and Claire will probably share at some point and taste yeah. amazing. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're, you're Ben's a Londoner, isn't he? He is, yes. He's from Kent. Oh, right. But his family's from Kent. He was from Doncaster. Spent time in Canada. Oh, he's, he's a proper Romany. 
but like some of the Roman he's just travel England. No, he doesn't. He travels all over the world. Yeah. So he's Ben. So it's his dad Ben and his granddad Ben because it seems like the Roman Egyptians all seem to have the same name passed down, don't they? It must get very confusing <laughs> with all the all the Peters that are around. One of the youngest sons. Yeah, so Ben's one of the youngest sons. So he was named after his granddad Ben. But his oldest brother is called Tom, and his father is called Tom, and his granddad is all called Tom to keep the family name going. So then, when any Romany family goes somewhere and they hear the name, say for instance, Tom Loveridge or Ben Loveridge, they know the family because it's the same name from hundreds of years ago. It's really, yeah. really nice. Like I'm Deborah, my mother's Deborah, and um, it's just to keep tradition going and Romanies actually have so many traditions it's hard to keep up with but we've got so many traditions what we try to keep going it's hard to yeah. keep up sometimes <laughs> talking of the food I did have a little video actually if you wanted me to play it as well uh just of um Debs and Ben cooking because uh, Debs might want to explain about this pot as well so let me play this quickly this is Romany Yorkshire pudding in the old black gypsy pan. How old's that pan, Ben? That, it was my great grandfather's. So how old would you say it is? Um, I'd say 70, 80 year old, yeah. And this is what they used to cook outside the Romany gypsy wagons with, also known as a vado. So here goes to the Romany Yorkshire pudding like a flat Yorkshire pudding I'll show you photos <laughs> now I just want to clear up because a lot of people get confused between Romany gypsies and the Irish gypsies um, and a lot of people have watched the big fat gypsy wedding and they've seen the way that the men on the big fat gypsy wedding treat their women now the Romany gypsy men are completely different from that, aren't they they're very um they're very respectful they? They are, I think um, Irish travellers have so many different beliefs um, than we do. I mean, they've got grabbing. We don't do grabbing. Um, the, if there was any grabbing going on, they'd be grabbed and slapped. Do you know what I mean? It's just completely different um, than us. A Romany, you're born into it. But a traveller, you can choose to be into it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I also want to talk to you about Tyson Fury because you're very good friends with Tyson and family, aren't you? Yes, I am. Um, there he is Tyson there. Is Paris. Um, I was brought up with her from Ireland. Oh. With heavenly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Tyson. Oh, that was his belt. That was that just after he won the fight to Klitschko. That um, photo was taken. That was about five years ago I think now but um but so a very important I thing um, yeah uh, sorry I was going to say about his campaign because we we need to talk about that don't we that's, that's really important because he started a campaign a couple of years ago and um, called travelers lives matter where he wants to raise awareness about racism and um, of the travelers that, that, that they face um, because like they've got a, a bit of a reputation, haven't they? But when when you go out, there's there's actually signs in doors and shops that say um, no no gypsies allowed. Um, and even in, it's just incredible in this day and age that you can still come across things like that. Um, you know, you, you wouldn't find that with any other race, would you, in the world? Um, and, and he's very passionate about that, isn't he? Yeah, it's just so upsetting, Jack. That. We're living in 2021 and I can go to a, a restaurant or a pub and on the door it will say no gypsies or travellers allowed and we just take it. We've yeah. not done anything wrong, not said anything wrong. We can go to, for instance, down to London and there'll be a sign, no gypsies or travellers allowed. And you can walk in, explain your case, and they'll literally get you and fling you out. So what happened in um, Lancaster, a lot of the um, publics 
um, ads, wouldn't add signs on the doors, not letting the travellers in. And Tyson was like, enough is enough. And he yeah. got all the Romany community from Lancaster and Morecambe and anybody, any other Romany that wanted to join them. And he set up Travellers Life Matter because it's just disgusting how we're getting treated. And I fear for my girls growing up in this world how it is because the racism against Romany and travellers it's just unbelievable and it's just upsetting because you shouldn't judge a book by its cover yeah. I've taught my girls and um, the little one's only a baby so she doesn't know at the minute but heavenly don't judge a book by its cover everybody is an individual just because yeah. someone does something wrong get them and chuck them out but whoever else is with them unless they do something if they do something remove them but if they haven't why it's just racism and we get them yeah. all the time that's right because he actually told a story um about well he's first of all he says tra travelers get discriminated and, and trodden on but they actually don't say anything because this is how it's always been for them but um you know he said there's got to be a change but he said um that him and ty mitchell were out celebrating in Manchester a couple of years ago. He just won a fight with um, Klitschko and um, they went to a bar in Manchester and the bar, uh, the, the doormen were saying, um, oh, can we get a picture with you? Can we get a picture? And he was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. But can we just get in and get a drink first and then we'll do pictures? And I said, oh no, you know, travellers can't come in. You're not, you're not allowed to come in and have a drink. And he was with a group of people. So there was Asian um, men with him and black men. They were allowed in um, to get a drink, but he wasn't you know so i mean that is absolutely that's just ridiculous isn't it it's just unbelievable it's unbelievable even to the point is romany girls weddings they don't on the invitation they will invite you to the wedding and then the day before they or even on the day they will send a whatsapp message out or like get everybody to ring ground the romany community who's going and give them the address of the venue because they're frightened of someone ringing up and letting them know that the Roman is. It's it's horrible. It is. It's yeah. horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Going going back and to um to this sort of person, you couldn't put signs on the door. Because actually, you sent me um a video, didn't you, of um of a Roman gypsy that, that was stopped by a policeman, and he was actually really physically abused wasn't he for absolutely no reason at all and luckily his wife was there filming it all so you know yes and that was only around you can google because it was went in all the papers the police officer wasn't in uniform um, and wanted to pull um the young boy and his wife up um and taking photos while they were driving and he was like what's this guy taking photos of my wife for anyway they pulled up as you could see on the video and then he started getting him on the floor he couldn't breathe he was saying get off me i can't breathe mm. and he was actually a police officer but he didn't say he was a police officer and he had no reason to pull them over he wasn't doing anything wrong whatsoever no but he had him actually well first of all he punched him in the face he didn't he yeah, and he had him on the floor and he was actually leaning on him and he was saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. It's horrendous. Yeah. yeah. And he said to him, can you get off my foot because I've got stitches? And he physically stamped on his foot on purpose. Yeah. Well, thank God his wife videoed it, you know, and it's out there now. <laughs> We've got a time delay. It's really, it's really weird, isn't it? But I just want to ask you about <laughs> Heavenly, your lovely Heavenly. Is she still there? No, she's gone to eat some sweets. Oh, she's because she's, because you're, you're a clairvoyant and and it's passed down through the family. And your Heavenly is an amazing clairvoyant as well, isn't she? She is. She's amazing. As a matter of fact, only tonight, I had a lady come to me and say, is she there? I was like, yeah, who's here? <laughs> Hello. Mm -hmm. It's heavenly. It's heavenly petrol and grow with you tonight. I was like, no, but she will be here on Friday night. She was like, oh, I'd really like another prediction of her. So she's doing very and How well. old is she? She's taking after Auntie Claire, I think. <laughs> how old is Heavenly? 
She's nine. She's nine. Wow. So Claire, Claire, have you got any questions, cousin? <laughs> well, Debs and I could talk for absolutely hours. So as you can see, the Petulengo families, we like to take, we like to talk about. I'm a bit worried that I can hear some glitches. I'm not sure which one of you is glitching. So <clears throat> I want you both to stay on. Um, Mind of the Central Apologies, who can't join us this evening, I do know that we've got her son gone back into isolation with us. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is I want to spend the show talking to Deb with you and I, and also taking some viewer questions as well. But I'm going to take you off one at a time, or maybe ask you both to come off and reach out to them, if that's okay with you both. Yeah. <laughs> so if you both want to take yourselves off, we can come on again, and hopefully we'll get a great connection. Um, so that everyone can hear everything that we're saying. So uh, let's have a little look. Take yourselves off, ladies, and then just click the link again and come back on. Deb, that's it. Click the link off and then come back on again. And then, oh, that's a bit better now, actually. Hold on. Talk, talk to me. No, if you just click it, that's it. She's gone. Uh, if you just joined us this evening, I am absolutely honoured tonight that my cousin Deborah Petulengro um, is on the show with us tonight. Let's see if Jack's there as well. And uh, we'd like to take some questions from you. How are you doing, Jack? Are you doing right. Thank you. <laughs> see, you thought I could talk. Uh, Deborah, <laughs> full of information about the Romani Gypsies, and uh, that's why I wanted to close my mouth for just a moment. It was very hard, though. Um, <laughs> get some of the viewer questions as well because um i don't often talk about it uh, on the show but you know there's been a lot of situations when i was growing up and uh deb says a lot more of our family up in blackpool where a sort of racism and uh, hatred towards the gypsy culture um is a really big thing and i try to ignore it and, and luckily thanks to what i do and where i am in my work it doesn't happen to me you know as much as it did when i was younger but i think it's it's really important to pull light on it but also, we wanted to talk about the difference between things like Big Gypsy Wedding and uh, the way that we live our lives as well. So if you've got some questions for Debs now on the Romany life, let's see if she's glitching now. There we go. Have a little look. Glitching a little bit, but let's go ahead anyway. Frankie Payne, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, I can't hear what you're saying, Debs. Uh, I can't hear you. It's glitching. John says, Ripper says, I don't know what it's crackling, cuz. I don't know. You got a question anyway. Tim Gary says, It's so lovely to watch your expressions. Uh, you talking, you lion, so proud of you. Oh, you got my expressions. I am. You know what? Uh, just because I am well known for what I do, um, it doesn't mean I'm better than anyone. Every single member of my family in Blackpool. Um, absolutely incredible. Guys, is it glitching when they're booked? I want to keep on and I'm not quite sure why it is. Like, Deb, do you want to can I come back on, on your iPad or a different device so we can keep you on? Right, let me check Deb's off for a moment. You're saying that um, it's still glitching. So what I'm going to do is see if Deb's can click the link on a different device um, or message me, Deb's, because I've got lots of things that I want uh, to talk to you about as well. So uh, don't stop being proud. Uh, we are very, very proud indeed of our race. Uh, but one of the points that Debs wanted to make is uh, the program Big Fat Gypsy Wedding. Did you guys all think that that was how us Romani gypsies lived our lives? Or did you all know uh, that there was a big difference between Romani gypsies and the traveling gypsies on the program? Well, I mean, me personally, I, I, before I met you, I didn't know anything about Romani gypsies. I just thought gypsies were gypsies. So, right. yeah, I, I mean, I've learned a lot. And, and obviously, I, I reviewed your book um, as well. And, and so I found out about your, your mum's life and your grandparents' life and things like that. So, well, do you know what's really interesting is that when we were talking to publishers um, for The Girl in the Painted Caravan that my mum and I wrote together, it was the reason that the book got so well received by the public was because Big Big Fat Gypsy Wedding was all over the TV at that point. It was when the first series was out. And that's probably one of the reasons we got the publishing deal. But in actual fact, the irony of it is, is that we wrote the book to show how different Romani Gypsies were compared to the ones uh, that were shown on the programme. For example, um, I wasn't allowed to wear jeans uh, when I was growing up. It was something a girl didn't do. And uh, let's have a little look. Joanne Ripper says she thought that they were the same. Uh, definitely not. 
Uh, Lydia Hunt says uh, her, mom, her nanny told her about the gypsy culture. Um, so a traveler is someone who decides to take on the gypsy way of life. And they can do that at any age from 18 to 80. You know, it doesn't really matter. But for someone like Debs and I, um, being born into a Romani family, it's something that the generations before you were all raised that way. So the traditions that we were raised with will go on and on and on. And all of the children will be um, taught to use their clairvoyance, their gift they've got. Debs herself will tell you uh, when she comes back on, you know, she only had in her whole life 18 months of schooling for her whole life. And if you listen to her talk and you say the way she is, you know, she's absolutely amazing. But I'll, I'll let you tell her, I'll let her tell you, you know, what she's done with her life ever since and uh you know whether or not she's going to send her children to school i've certainly pulled uh different members of my children out of school and uh, had them home educated by tutors for the very uh, i think she, she told me earlier that that's what she wants to do because um obviously we can see that heavenly's um got the clairvoyant gift as well so um you know she wants her to develop that so and I'm, yeah. I'm hoping when Heavenly comes back on uh, that we can have a word with her um, as well. You see, a Romani gypsy would never go um, and camp somewhere in their vado and uh, then leave the land with litter. We'd actually plant herbs and leave it well for the next person that was there. But it has been hard. And sometimes, you know, when you want to go to a wedding, there's weddings that have been cancelled, the venues on the day, because the owners of the venues think that, it, you know, we're associated with trouble and, and fights. And, and as for grabbing, not in a million years you know the whole dating process is that there's there's a routine to it you don't just take a girl out you'd certainly never kiss somebody on the first date uh, there's a whole tradition to it as well um, you'd have to take all your brothers with you anyway wouldn't you to make sure yeah. you were okay <laughs> absolutely absolutely well Debs is coming back backstage now so let's ask her because um i really want you to all to get to know her she's absolutely incredible so let me bring her back on Oh, yes. that is so much better. Oh, that's better, Debs. <laughs> it was like newspaper going like this. I can I can concentrate now. Come back. Hello. Um, Don't take so me yeah. long to get back. <laughs> you can't keep a gypsy away. You can't keep, oh, a, good can't gypsy keep a good gypsy girl down. <laughs> Over to you, Jack. What other questions? Yeah, Debs. So when did you actually, I mean, I know it's always been in your family, but when did you find that that you were clairvoyant what, what happened how did you know oh god it was years ago i was younger than heavenly i must have been about five six maybe i was um with my mother as we do as we bring our girls up and um, in the fortune telling booth with her because that's how we get our practices practice we can't go and be an apprentice somewhere we've got to be in there with mother or auntie or whoever and i can remember standing up and looking at my mother saying she looked like a princess mom and she was like oh okay and i wouldn't sit down and i said to the lady oh like how what was your dress like and she'd got married the day before she was on a honeymoon so that's where it all started from oh so do you do you do palm reading as well because i know you do tea leaf reading as well yeah I do. So I do um, your palm readings um I do your tea leaves. The tea leaves are unbelievable. Um, well, you did mine earlier today. <laughs> yes, yeah, very good, the tea leaves. And I do your crystal ball as well and your Romany tarot, your Claire Petrolengro card. <laughs> um, amazing. <laughs> amazing. So do you two get to see much of each yeah, other? If you haven't any guys, go to Claire's page. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do you know what? The biggest ask Debs, the, the time that we all get together and we all get in our finest designer gear with the, with the nicest handbags and when it's a mass gathering, uh, which happens a few times a year, is at weddings and funerals, isn't it, Debs? It is. It is. Yeah. There needs to be more gatherings. Yeah. But yeah, we're just coming yeah. out of COVID now, so we can blame it on COVID, can't we? Well, of course we can. But, you know, it's something where if there was a wedding or a funeral, it's a thing of respect and there's always large numbers of, of us. But when I was a little girl, I used to go up. So Deb's uh, granny, um, I used to go and stay with her in the summer times and I would uh, lay in bed with, with Leah, who, my other cousin, and we would... She, yeah, Leah would I get heard photographs. this story. Leah would get photographs out of people I hadn't met. And then Leah would say to me, right then, Claire, what do you think of this this person? 
And I would say, well, I think she's going to get married twice. She's never going to get a fella. She's dishonest, whatever. And I would say what I thought of the people in the pictures. And then over the years, she'd say, oh, you were right about that one and you were right about that one. And I would do the same to them, or, you know, to my cousins when they came down. But you'll see as well that Deborah's grandmother is actually uh, on the Three of Cups card as well with my aunt on her as well. So I put all of our family history on the cards. So sometimes instead of learning just from your mum, which is quite difficult sometimes because you're like, no, I want to go and eat a sweet. I want to do this. And um, you'd be so <laughs> to the members of the family to go to work with them and to watch them give readings, wouldn't you, Debs? And, uh, you know, yeah. to say what you felt about the clients as well. Julie Reynolds is saying, uh, my tea leaf from you, Debs, was absolutely amazing. Uh, such a gift. Kim Gary saying to you, uh, she had a lovely reading today with you. Spot on, my girl. She did. Uh, thank you very she much. Did. And there's um, Karen, Karen, oh, where is it? Karen Houston said, what's the difference in Romany tarot and normal tarot cards? Well, the Romany Gypsy tarot cards I created go back to the Babylonian times. So they were created when tarot cards were first created with the elements, with the seasons on, um, linked to numerology as well. Um, each There are seven tarot cards which relate to a day of the week. But if you look at modern tarot cards, a lot of people have put their own meanings on them and sort of gone off on a rail on a tangent, if you like. So we've gone back to the tra traditional ways because that's the way that we use them. Um, and you can also use playing cards that have the same meanings on as well. So we've got the lot on ours as well. But that's, you know, we've been taught the traditional way from our family as well. And it's, it's like hand reading, you know. Nowadays, you can pick up any book and think you can read hands. But... I would like Granny to say, a little knowledge is very dangerous. Isn't that right, Debs? It is. It is. But I tell you what I love about Claire's cards is I've used a lot of, Heavenly's back, I've used a lot of tarot um, in the past. But I find when I'm using Claire's tarot cards, my clairvoyance side kicks in a lot quicker and I feel like I need to pick the crystal ball up as well. So by reading the Romany tarot, I feel that my clairvoyant side comes out a lot more with the with the client and with the cards as well. Mm. Are you are you a medium as well, Deborah, or just a clairvoyant? No, just a clairvoyant. Yeah. Yeah, and there's Heavenly in the background. <laughs> Hi, Heavenly. Hi. Do you want to come and say hello? Come and say hello to all our, all our viewers that are watching. Hi. <laughs> Heavenly, come and let come and let Jack ask you a few questions. I want okay. to tell, tell Jack what you've been doing for school. Well, in school, there's been some COVID cases, okay? Mm -hmm. So I pulled her out two weeks ago um, because my dad nearly um, died with COVID in January. So I'm very, very frightened that my dad gets it again. And I can't jeopardise her going to school and my dad getting COVID. So I pulled her out of school. I rung the school up and I said, at like, I'm just telling you the truth of the matter. I can't afford my family member comes before an education. If my dad dies, it's before her education. Yeah. So they said that that's not a problem, Deborah. We completely understand you. I said, but I said she's studying the tarot. So they was like, right. So every day she drawed a photo of the well, she copied the tarot cards and she put all the meanings on them. And that's been her um, schoolwork for the last two week yeah wow have you learnt lots heavenly yeah yeah it was the question heavenly was doing yeah. lots wasn't it heavenly when did you know that you were clairvoyant as well heavenly hold on turn turn a light on for mum so we can see your beautiful yeah, face gorgeous i can turn this one on Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> i'm gingerer than a four <laughs> At least it's your own hair, love. <laughs> All naturally, a girl. <laughs> so when Jack. did you? When did you find out you was clairvoyant? When like I proper started getting into it and that. When she proper started getting into it and that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So we was um we was with a client. Well, I was with a client, and I've known she's always been psychic, but she's got to be in with me so i always say to her if you feel anything don't speak just, just stand, stand up. just stand up so that's what she does so i was reading um this lady's hand and i seen little gold coins in her hand um but she stood up 
so then she was like can i have a look and she's seen three letters and she was like x ah pain was like right we'll write it down but the lady was into cryptocurrency i didn't know about cryptocurrency i didn't know basically existed things like that so i picked the gold coins up but what i didn't pick up is the name of a coin but this yeah. one did wow um, and is that what you want to do giving, heavenly she's been giving predictions ever since yeah so is that what you, you're going to do when you get older is that what you want to do yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh <laughs> so can you I, can you look at jack and see, give her a prediction of a future. Okay. Right, really study your face, because we can tell with the face as well. And really study your face. Okay, so I see that the person that you've been in the past and the person that you are now is not who you're going to be in the future. You're going to achieve what you want to achieve and you're going to be who you want to be. Woo! Wow! I love that! Oh, well done. I love that. So as you can She's see, the way that Deborah is with Heavenly, that's the same way that we are with all our children. So she asks her what she can feel. And if you can see from the way that Heavenly responds, Heavenly just comes from the heart. And she just says what she's feeling. And also being around all of our family like we are, you often find with the younger children that there's the old woman in there as well and you can almost feel like heaven has been here before there's Definitely. a wise old... and when people say we shouldn't let children read at such a young age i mean look at her, how can you not yeah it's just it's natural it just comes so natural to her. it's only going to get stronger when she practices so she's got to be with me to 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 bring it more stronger and more energies and more clairvoyant side out in her yeah and if that's uh, what she I... wants to do i'll, I'll yeah. back her all the way well listen uh, one thing that we do know is that since i've gone sort of live and there's sort of a reality show essence to what i do as well i want to also show you the personal side of our life as well because hats off to deb's okay because uh, we go to work uh, down what we call our well down the places where we give readings uh, and if you think about it deb's as a romani woman she's got a home to run a husband to look after children to take care of and what people don't see behind the scenes is that sometimes you know you've got to go to work and you've got to take all your children with you and that comes with its fair share of humor as well doesn't it Debs? it does it's not easy but you no. just have to roll with it because if yeah. not, you'd sit down and cry with the head the day ahead. Work, cleaning, washing, cooking, baby to the doctors yesterday, getting heavenly from school. It, it's hard. So you've just got to roll with it. Yeah. And I, I did actually, I shouldn't really say this, but it's after the nine o'clock watershed. Close your ears, heavenly. Uh, she was doing <laughs> so much today. And I just left the gym. I turned around to her and I texted her and I said, I think you've forgotten something. She said, what? I said, you forgot to stick the broom up your ass to do the sweeping. <laughs> How often have we heard that, though, Claire, from guardians oh. and mothers? <laughs> Absolutely. Here, Debs, here's a question for you as well. Frankie Payne says, when you read someone's palm, what is it you can see and read from a palm? Is it family? Is it marriage? Is it health? It can be everything. It really can. Reading every different person's hand is completely different. So in somebody's hands, to me, love can jump out family can jump out marriage can jump out and some of us it depends on the lines of the hands to me it's my clairvoyant side of how much i pick up on that person and also on the reading is it a crystal reading because i get a lot more from a crystal reading with meditating beforehand than just a hand reading so it's different readings and also the hands everybody's hands is different Deb, do you ever come across somebody that you just don't get anything from at all? No. No. No, I don't I don't think that's ever happened. Some sometimes when the people, clients open the rounds, it's like a book and you think, I'm gonna be here a long time. <laughs> but you just read the top lines of the hands and you know by being with that person, what they need to hear, the top things of the hands. But it's also down to their burning questions as well and what they want and what advice they want. They could be going through a divorce and different things. 
Yeah, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something that's quite funny that we've discussed as well. Everyone who's watching, sometimes, you know, you you know, well, I can't say a lot of the people that Debs reads for, but a lot of the celebrities that she reads for, a lot of the celebrities that I've read for, people are always asking us, you know, oh my God, I bet they must have been so interesting to read for. But actually, when Debs and I have conversations about clients that we've read for, it's actually the girls who work in boots or, you know, down the bank, that we're like, oh my gosh, you have an amazing hand. And sometimes the more famous yes. the person, the more boring they can be. Is that right, Deb? <laughs> yes, that's so, so true. So I like reading someone early 20s because you can see the full life ahead of them. And when you see amazing things, you just want to cry because you're like, you've got such great things coming your way. Like, I wish I had a future like yours because you've got so much good things, work, jobs, families, children coming to you. And it's, I love in my work being able to deliver that news. I love it. And then when they come back and they're like, yes, that was spot on. I was like, I know. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. So, Deb, if people want to get in touch with you or to have readings, how do they get in touch with you? So, I have got um, Facebook, so under Deborah Petrolangro, and I've also got Instagram. So, just type in Deborah Petrolangro and drop me a message. Love. Well, we had a funny, we had a funny psychic um, moment this morning, didn't we? Because I was texting you as you were te telling me about this. The, the tea leaves and we did it exactly the same time didn't we it was really weird so what happened what happened this morning is every morning it's romany tradition to do the tea leaves in the morning so you do the tea leaves in the morning because it sets you up for the full day ahead um or if it's before a marriage or advice on something you say what you want and then you ask the tea leaves well this morning i was doing the tea leaves and i was like I just need leading, but my clairvoyant side was like Jack Taylor. Now, me and Jack hadn't spoke before this, so I did the tea leaves, and I thought, oh, well, I'm on Langro Live tonight. I'll drop her a message, and I put the tea leaves on Facebook, tagged Jack in there. As I went to WhatsApp, Jack was messaging me already. So um, it was an honour to do them for you this morning, Jack. <laughs> well, I'll tell and you what the thing. copy was. It was. One thing that happens in our uh, family, it's quite a typical thing within a Romani family as well, is that you can know who's going to call you that day or who you're going to see that day in the family. You know, you can prepare. So my mother would put, sometimes put something in a handbag and I'd say, who, who's that for? She'd say, oh, it's for aunt so-and-so. And I'd say, but we're not seeing them today. She went, no, we'll, we'll see them later, trust me. And I think one of the things that we want to promote as well is that in this ever-changing world that we're in, this uncertain world now, is for people to follow their heart, their dreams, but to follow their sixth sense as well, you know? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now I it's think it's never Deb, too late. It's never too late. I think Deb should stay with us because actually we've got a little section um, that you want to do as well. You've got some, is it celeb gossip? And you've also got something about shoes, which we call chocolates actually as well, don't we, Deb? Yes, we call that. We chocolate. We've also, um, <laughs> you Deb, I know you, yeah, how you love Sorry, yeah, you, you you like watching TV and we do a little section called What to Watch This Week. We just tell the viewers what we recommend. Um, so I know that you and I both really like Virgin River. Oh, we're on season three. Have you seen season three yet? We're on season oh. four, aren't we? Season four now? No, season three. Oh, I, I'm just yeah, watching season three. Oh, oh well, but whatever it is, it's good, it isn't it? <laughs> well, it's on Netflix for anybody. So why, why do you like it so much, Deb? I just love where it's set in just this little village and the little doctors. And I just feel like I want to go there. I want to be a part of that little community and yeah. definitely go and have some, what what is it, the eat in that little hut? Whatever they eat in that little hut, I want to go there and take the gypsy <laughs> sand with me and show my I wake up. <laughs> Because the story actually is about um, a nurse called Mel who moved from LA to um, to Northern California because she wanted to start a new life, didn't she? Because she'd had a bit of a traumatic, um, she'd lost her husband and, and um, lost a baby. And so she was kind of relocating and she saw an ad for a midwife and a nurse 
in this um, yes, that's little it. town. Jack's Bar. I want to go to Jack's Bar. Jack's Bar, yeah, yeah. And she was actually having a really the gypsies. <laughs> But she was actually, she went there and she was working for the doctor, wasn't she? And he was giving her a hard time because it was a small town and they were all quite set in their ways. And she was going to leave and go back to L.A. But then she went to Jack's bar and fell in love with Jack. And then she stayed. It's amazing. So I've only watched the first episode of the third series. And we are on the third series, aren't we? Or have I yes, got it right? I've seen it on Netflix. Um, Maybe watch so it. I know that he's not dead because when on the second series it was like he was dead. But I know yeah. he's alive now. So yes, he's alive. A yeah. Of early nights. But it's it's a really easy feel good watch, isn't it? It's so easy to watch and the scenery's beautiful and it's just it's just nice, isn't it? Yeah. It's lovely. I just love it. I just want to go to Virgin River. <laughs> Well, I got to choose the next one, didn't I? And I'm just having a little look for it now. I watched half of it last night uh, with my daughters and the other half I watched uh, when they got home from school. And if you like a psychological uh, thriller film with lots of twists and turns, uh, then my recommendation is this film on Netflix, which is called Fractured. Uh, let us know if any of you have seen it. don't you? Oh, yeah, really, really good film. And I don't often get to watch a whole film, but this week I did. So let us know if you've seen that. It's called Fractured. It's on Netflix. Are you going to watch it, Jack? Yes, I'm going to watch it. Well, I've just watched um, um, Smother, which is on Sky. I think it was on Alibi, um, but you can you can get that on demand. And that's an Irish drama because you know how much I love Ireland. Um, yeah. And that's that's it. That was actually filmed in County Clare, yeah. um, and it stars the amazing um, Derv Le Kerwin, Um And it's about her character Val, who it's her fiftieth birthday. And her husband drops a bombshell on her birthday, which just blows the whole family apart. And he is actually murdered that night. So it's a bit of a whodunit. Um, the acting's brilliant and it's um it's it's really good. And yeah, it's a bit like Midsummer Murders kind of thing. But um, but yeah. Well, I like that. Now, listen, before before Debs came on, you were saying that it's a national pandemonium day. You also sent me um, a picture earlier on. Um, I don't quite know what the picture is for, but I do know that it sent me into quite a pandemonium because it's something that I hate. Uh, could you explain why you've sent this picture in, please, Jack? Oh, OK. So this is fashion. Right. So we've got a bit of fashion news. And, Deb, I know you like your designer bags and shoes and things like this. Now, these, um, which shop do you think is selling these croc-type shoes? And, you know... It's a shop I ain't going to. <laughs> <laughs> so what? where do you think they, they are being sold? Does anybody know? No? Croc? Oh, well, I don't know because I wouldn't give no more than £5 for them. <laughs> well, actually, the um, name of them... Yeah, but you'd have to pay me £5 to wear them. It was still okay, me. well, in actual fact, they're called Women's Platform Perforated G Sandals from Gucci and they retail at £310. Stop it. Did you just say Gucci? Oh Gucci. And if you go back to the picture, you can see on the on the shoes the little G signs. See, all over there, there's like little, the little Gucci yes, signs. Yeah. <laughs> I think they need to sack the designer. <laughs> I think they need to bring Tom Ford back. I really, really do. Uh, now, yes. I've also got a lot of pictures that you've uh, got in. We don't have the lovely Amanda wearing here tonight, uh, but we do have something you've chosen for her. You've also chosen some shoes for my cousin Deborah as well. Yeah, well, you know, like last time I chose some wedding dresses for you all. So I thought, as we were talking about shoes, um, mm. I thought I'd um, choose you all some shoes. Oh, fit your personality. <laughs> Let's so, see than the Gucci ones for us, Deb, shall we? <laughs> okay, so have we got the, the first picture? Okay, so these are the first ones that you've chosen. Do you want me to tell do you want me to say who they've chosen for? So I or do we just bring them up? Well, where are your ones? I've chosen um your shoes. Okay, let me have a little look. Uh these are the shoes you've chosen for me. Let's have a little look. Right, Ooh. so those are your nighttime shoes because you've got a bit of a dramatic side and you're quite romantic. Very beauty in the beast then. Yeah, so I thought, you know, you like your Disney films and your Cruella and all that. So I thought um, they would suit you for the nighttime. And for the daytime, yeah. I found you, it's because you're, quite, you're very fun loving and, um, you know, you, you like to like run around and be a little kid, don't you, on the beach. So I thought these for you. Do you like them? 
Yes, they're, they're very nice. Yes, they're good. I like those. I want to see what you picked for Deb, though. I'm curious to see. Okay, so these, Deb, yeah. um, these just, this just spelled out oh, Romany yeah. Dixie for me. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't tie up around my fat legs. Oh. <laughs> they're great, though, aren't they? These are I all... had, I've had a del I'm sat in my walking wardrobe, okay? Yes, you're in your wardrobe, aren't you? quiet in here away from the children and i've had the delivery <gasps> so do Ooh. you want to see my new shoes yes Ooh. definitely oh Ooh. they're beautiful what size are they're you new shoes. <laughs> they are handsome very very nice indeed uh yes frankie Payne likes those shoes as well uh I've also got some pictures you've sent here, Jack, as well, of someone on over in shoes as well. So shall I bring um, that one up as well? Let's have a little look. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it's Vivian Westwood turned 80 recently. And obviously, you know, she's one of the world's best designers. Um, and there she is there. And that picture was, do you remember when Naomi Campbell fell over on the runway? It was like 1993. Um, yeah during like her, I think it was her autumn winter collection. And there was also Kate Moss. And um, remember she had the face paint, her Marie Antoinette, she was eating an, um, eating an ice cream and she walked topless down the runway. So um, yeah, we got that picture as well, but you. But let's have a little look at that one quickly. Uh... But do you want me to give you a little fun fact, girls? Yes, yes go on. Vivian, so Vivian, Vivian Westwood, um, where I live on the caravan park, um, for the last couple of years, there's been a fracking site about a mile and a half away for, from us, um, which was causing loads of bother. And there was protesters what stayed there in tents and lots of hippies and everything for about three or four years. And Vivian Westwood come down and she leaded the protests and you could walk to it from where I am. And I was in the middle of a protest with Vivian Westwood. Look at me. I told you there's more famous people than I do. She knows them all. She really does. Uh, now we've got a show for our followers as well. You picked some shoes for our lovely Amanda wearing, didn't you? Yeah, she can't be with us today, but yes, I picked some shoes for Amanda because we yeah. know she likes nature and trees and the outdoors. So I thought these would be quite good for the daytime because they're quite like, they're florally and romantic, like Amanda. And mm -hmm. then. Um, some fun shoes for the evening because keeping with the, the nature thing, you might thought you might quite like those. These yeah. actually are all from um, a site on Facebook from Roma what's it called? Bohemian Romanticism. And they have some beautiful pictures of bardos and, and really lovely, colourful pictures. So if you follow them, you know, it, there's some lovely things on there. Absolutely love. Now we can't leave this segment, Jack, of course, without picking you a pair of shoes. So, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think about these for Miss Jack Tyler? Well, you okay. see, these they're a bit plain and sensible in the front, but then when you turn them around, they're a bit naughty at the back. So I think that's a bit of me, definitely. Ooh. I think Claire, them shoes, yeah. cousin Shannon, Auntie Leah's daughter Shannon, she had a cream pair when yeah. she got married under her wedding dress and they was like that. Oh, you see, if ever you want some nice clothes, you all I've got to do is go up to Blackpool. They've got the best wardrobes ever. But it's like Deborah was talking about um, at the very beginning as well. And I think I did a very good job to keep my mouth shut, actually. <laughs> I, I, when um, my grandmother, her great-grandmother, used to uh, go to the royalties' houses, uh, to do readings, they would be given these big bag of clothes, and there were so many sisters that my grandmother had that they had this expression, and the expression was that we still use today: um, first up, best dressed, yes. because they can share all their clothes. Isn't that right, Debs? First up, yes, best dressed. Yes. What what other um what other sayings? Well, uh, an expression that we say that can mean good or bad. Is Dordie. So Dordie will normally be, be part of a daily conversation. Dordie. Yeah. Dordie can mean well, Dordie. How, how could you talk like that? Or, or, or Dordie, that's nice. So Dordie's a big one. It means many things, doesn't it? It does. It does. And uh, a lot of our um, Romany family in Blackpool say Daddy, yeah. Daddy. Not all, Rom Daddy. Not all Romanies say it, but the Blackpool ones say Daddy, yeah. 
They do. And also Deborah's grandmother, um, her, her first name is Daisy that we use. So we have a fat middle name, we have a first name. So we'll use different names if there's more than one of you, if you're talking when there's all of you with the first name around. So Aunt Daisy would say to um, her, her, would, her husband would say to her, Sonny Boy would say to her, what do you think of that? Uh, and he would say to her, Han handsome Daisy. That's what Sonny Boy would say to Daisy. It's handsome Daisy. So now all of the generations afterwards, if something's nice, we say it's handsome Daisy. And that comes from a member of our family, handsome, but it's A-N-S-O-M, and handsome Daisy. So sometimes a lot of things are to, to do with characters. So for example, Joey Gray, the famous dish, was made by a man who was very poor called Joey Gray, who was a gypsy. And uh, he could always make this dish with potatoes and onions and gravy. Even when he had no money, he'd make his dish and it was called Joey Gray. And if you ask any gypsy or traveler now, um, you know, they'll make a Joey Gray because it's a traditional gypsy dish as well. But I think we've lost Deb. She must have fallen in the wardrobe. With all her <laughs> <laughs> she went through the door in her cupboard and ended up in Narnia. But listen, guys, uh, have you enjoyed having Debs? And should we get back her back more for more Lengro lives? Uh, she's absolutely a, uh, amazing, isn't she? Uh, Let's just ask quickly, Claire. Um, yeah. The Roman Egyptians, you originated from India, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, many, yeah. many centuries ago from India, um, and then basically we were a race that was sent away we, and became a nomad race. And then uh, they landed on the coast of Scotland and then they all scattered. So the reason that you see Romani gypsies in seaside towns is during the war, it wasn't possible for us all to um, stay together and do readings in one place. There wouldn't be enough clients. So all of the sisters decided that they would all take their own families and go to seaside resorts. Hence, we're famous with seaside towns as well. Um, so uh, Frankie Payne says, what's her question? She said, can I ask a question? Going back to homeschooling, do you opt in to placing your children into school? Some of my children I pulled out. Uh, so my daughter, Carmen Valentine, I pulled her out at age 12. Uh, she then was homeschooled, then she left school early. Uh, funny enough, she's now since decided to put her back, herself back into college. Um, I myself left school at 14. Um, my my mother didn't go to school. Um, so really, um, when we had Deb back again, I mean, she was only in education for 18 months and she ended up uh, being a makeup artist for Estee Lauder. She ended up working for Pandora. So it's never stopped us getting jobs because we talk our way in. And I, I think it also depends on the child that you've got. And the situation that you're in nowadays, really, I think it's it's different. Whereas, you know, uh, Lucy, um, I would wouldn't take out of education because she's flourishing and she, and she loves it so much. But certainly in the old days, education wasn't first choice because we didn't want our children to mix with gorges and learn their way of life. We wanted to keep that tradition and keep our families families close. And one of the reasons for that is that that we felt shoved out by the real world as well. So we were wary of what people thought of us. We were wary of the racism or of the way that we were treated being dirty gypsies. So, you know, it was a secret life, really. So the girls used to follow in their mother's footsteps, you know, to be clairvoyant um, and things like that. So what did the boys do? Blacksmith. So the name Petulengro means man of horses. All the men were trained very well to use tools. Um, and also the women in the family would have their place to do readings. So, for example, we do have men in the family that read. My uncle Leo Petulengro did. But the men would look after the women by building their, their place where they worked, uh, making sure that it looked good, uh, doing the hard work and also looking after the land around the Vardo that they had as well. So the men were the protectors, if you like. Uh, and making sure as well that when the women go to functions, that they're, they're sort of bouncers and look after them as well. I love that. That's a great <laughs> way of life. <laughs> uh, Frankie Payne said, do you have to marry into another gypsy family? We like to. So it's good, you know, for the tailors to marry a Petulengro or the Lees to marry a tailor. Uh, so we try to sort of marry into gypsy families. And a lot of um, Romani gypsies do marry travellers nowadays. But you've got to remember that it's a dying race because we no longer live in the communities that we did, but we are going to school. So hence, you know, we are going to fall in love with those who aren't part of the gypsy culture anymore. And, and that's just really the modern day and, and the way that any race is watered down. And you see the racism in football and people saying, you know, England is whatever. 
the English aren't English. You know, we're made up of yeah. being pillaged by the Saxons and Vikings. So we're all, yeah. all the same colour. And I think we all need to come together and, and, and be kind, isn't it, really? Absolutely. Lovely. Well, I think we are out of time, Jack. So if you'd like to wrap up the show, uh, then I will bring up the uh, exit credits. Yeah, well, thank you, everybody, for watching. We hope you enjoyed the show today. And thank you, lovely Deborah, wherever you are in that wardrobe. And do come back again because um, we'd love to have you back on. So take care, everyone, and see you again soon. Bye. Bye.